Hello and welcome to Droix. In today's video, Jazz Hands, as we take a look at the Ioneo Next Pro Windows Gaming Handheld. We will be unboxing it and taking a close look at the device. Then we will run some system and gaming benchmarks to compare its performance with other handhelds. We will finish off with some gameplay footage of popular Windows games and try a few high-end console emulators. As always, let's get started with the unboxing. Opening the package reveals a box of gloves, which by unboxing law you must wear when first opening the Ioneo. Once you have the gloves on, you can now lift the protective foam to reveal another box. After several attempts of trying to get the box open with the slippery gloves, I gave up. I'll take my chances with the unboxing gloves law. Inside the very stylish plastic box are some leaflets which briefly show the device's functions. There's also an envelope with a cloth for cleaning the screen. Next, there is a metal nameplate. On the advanced model, these were custom engraved with your name, but they are blank on the Pro. There is of course nothing to stop you getting it engraved yourself. There is a plastic overlay which shows some of the features such as the whole sensor controls. And finally we get to the Ioneo Next Pro. This is the bright white model, there is also a jet black theme available. We will show the device in more detail shortly. Underneath the protective foam is a USB charge cable and two USB Type-C to Type-A adapters. There is also a stand for the nameplate. There is a high power USB charger with a US power plug built in. There are plug adapters included for the UK, Europe and Southeast Asia. The Ioneo Next measures around 10.5 by 4.4 by 1.18 inches at its largest points and it weighs 715 grams. It has a 7 inch LCD IPS multi-touch screen and runs at 1280 by 800 resolution. On the front are the left clickable analog stick and D-pad. There's two buttons below which are view and menu aka select and start. On the right are four gaming buttons and the right clickable analog stick. Below is a custom button which you can define in IA space and the IA key which brings up the IA space software. You can view our separate video on the IA space front end if you want to learn more about it. On the top of the device you have the left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. There is the power button which doubles as a fingerprint sensor for fast logging into Windows. Next to that are the volume up and down buttons. To the right is a 3.5mm headphone jack and there's a USB Type-C port which can be used for charging or data. On the bottom is a second USB Type-C port which can also be used for charging or data and on either side are stereo speakers. Both the analog joysticks and trigger buttons are using Hall effect sensors. Instead of traditional button type activation, they use magnets which detect activation through a magnetic field. It provides more accurate input and also less wear and tear on the parts. Along with the Ioneo Next Advanced, it's the first handheld to use them which is great to see. A brief look at the Ioneo Next Pro technical specifications. Inside there is an AMD Ryzen 7 5825U processor and Radeon Vega 8 graphics. It comes with a fast 16 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM on the next model and on the next Pro it has 32 gigs. The next model comes with 1TB and the Pro with 2TB of NVMe SSD. In our benchmarks it has a read speed of just under 3.5 gigs a second and write speeds of just under 3 gigs which is very impressive. It's powered by a 4100 mAh battery. In our tests we got around 5.5 hours sitting idle on the desktop and 1 hour 40 minutes on maximum CPU and GPU load. 
During our tests, we measured the maximum fan noise level at 56 decibels and the highest temperature at 45 degrees. Onto our system benchmarks. We will be comparing the results with the Ioneo range, 1x player mini and 2 GPD devices. Note that these scores are based on older drivers etc, so there may be some minor differences, but nothing that would vastly affect the scores. Check out our full video if you want to compare the results with all of the handhelds, the link is in the description. We start the benchmarks with PC Mark, which runs a series of tests for everyday tasks such as web browsing, right through to image and video processing. This gives us a good look at how the Ioneo Next Pro performs in different situations. We get a score of 5819, with very good scores across the essentials, productivity and digital content creation categories. Comparing them with other handhelds, we can in fact see that the Ioneo Next Pro comes out on top just beating the next advance. There is a larger gap for third place with the Ioneo 2021 Pro, very closely followed by the One X Player Mini. BD Mark tests the CPU and GPU to see their peak performance when working together. This gives us a general indication of its video processing capabilities. These can be used for a range of applications, from video processing and of course gaming. We have run the test at 11, 20 and 35 watts TDP to see not only how well they perform at different TDPs, but also how the performance scales up. The Ioneo Next Pro scores 1059, 1455 and 1485. Again, it just takes the lead over the next advance. But as you can see, the Intel based 1X Player Mini still remains top with a massive 1982 score. In the first of our gaming benchmarks, we are running Forza Horizon 5 at 1280x800 on the lowest graphic settings. We have run the built in benchmark at 11, 20, and 35 watts TDP to see the difference in performance. The Ioneo Next Pro scores 59, 78 and 85 frames per second respectively. The Neo Advance also gets 85 at 35 watts, but you can see that at 11 watts it falls a little behind in frames per second, so the Next Pro overall takes first place. Next in our gaming benchmarks, we are running the first match of Street Fighter V at 1280x800 at the maximum graphic settings. As before, we are testing at 11, 20 and 35 watts TDP. The Ioneo Next Pro scores 46, 56 and 58 frames per second across the three TDPs. We can see that compared to the advanced model, it performs faster at 11 and 20 watts, with essentially the same results at 35 watts. The Intel based devices generally perform better than AMD on Street Fighter V. We can see that the One X Player Mini reaches 60 frames per second between 20 to 35 watts TDP, which the AMD based models do not reach at all. Our penultimate gaming benchmark test is Final Fantasy XIV running at 1280x800 resolution using the maximum graphics settings. We are testing at 11, 20 and 35 watts TDP. The Ioneo Next Pro scores 4211, 5388 and 5721 respectively. Compared to the Neo Advance, it initially performs faster at the same TDP, but by 35 watts it drops behind a little. Our final game benchmark is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is running at 1280x800 on the lowest graphic settings. And yeah, we are testing at 11, 20 and 35 watts TDP. The Ioneo Next Pro scores 45, 58 and 62 frames per second respectively. Similar to the Final Fantasy results, we can see that the Next Advance performs slower at lower TDP, but catches up with the Pro as it gets higher. 
Here is a quick roundup of all the benchmark results and some other devices to compare them. Don't forget, you can find the full comparison scores on our main video linked in the description and also on the blog post for this video. The IO Neo Next Pro takes the lead on system benchmarks with the highest on PC Mark and 3D Mark. AMD processors are generally better than Intel when pushed to their peak performance in tests like this. In terms of actual gamer performance, we can see that on Forza Horizon 5, the next Pro scores essentially the same as the Advance at 20 watts. They are impressive scores for 20 watts, and both beat the other devices hands down. For Street Fighter 5, Final Fantasy 14, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the mighty One X Player Mini takes the lead in all three games. The Pro does not quite make it to 60 frames a second on Street Fighter V. It's less than 100 points behind in Final Fantasy XIV and 4 frames per second behind on Tomb Raider. The Intel based devices have always taken the lead on these games when compared to AMD, but the gap in performance is closing between the two now, which is exciting to see. If you have the original Iron Neo Founders Edition, then the next Pro is definitely worth considering upgrading to. We are getting around a 17% average increase in performance across the benchmarks. Compared to the 2021 Pro, we get around an 8% increase in performance. It's a nice increase, but maybe not enough to warrant upgrading from that model. That's enough numbers for today. Let's sit back, relax and play some games to see how well they perform. We start off with LEGO Star Wars which was released not too long ago. We are running at 20 watts TDP, 1280 by 800 with all of the graphics set to around medium levels. Although there are some dips below 60 frames per second, it's barely noticeable, at least with my old eyes. You can drop the graphic settings lower or increase the TDP to say 25 watts to keep the frame rate closer to 60. Or if you wanted, you could lock the frame rate to 30 and create the graphics up higher. Overall, the game plays very well and you should not have any major issues. We are running 1280 by 800 on the default lowest graphic settings at 25 watts and are getting around 30 frames per second. You can play around with some tweaks and mods to improve the game's performance, but we are trying for an out of the box experience. The game is playable, but the frame rate will drop in busy scenes. Tunic is a fairly low demanding game. We are running at just 11 watts at 1280 by 800 resolution with all of the graphics set to their highest levels. We get 60 frames per second, but in some of the very busy scenes, you may get minor frame drops which are barely noticeable. You could increase the TDP to say 15 watts, just to keep it very stable 60 if you wanted to. I know many people will ask how the performance is if I do not include this game, so here it is. We are running at 1280 by 800 25 watts TDP on a mix of low and medium settings. We get varying frame rates depending on the pace and location in the game. It can be anything from 30 up to high 50s. You could lower the graphics to low and get a bit more stability if you wanted. For Mafia 2 Definitive Edition, we are running a mix of low and medium settings at 1280 by 800 resolution at 20 watts TDP. For the most part, we are getting around the 60 frames per second area, although the frame rate does drop now and again. It's not noticeable unless watching the counter though. You could decrease the graphics to lower settings or increase the TDP to 25 watts to keep it a bit more stable. Emulator performance is essentially the same as what we found on the Ioneo Next Advance. For everything up to the higher end consoles such as PS3 and Xbox 360, you should not run into many issues. As always, the performance on the more recent consoles emulators can vary between each update, with games previously not working properly that now work and vice versa. 
As such, we are not going to directly compare it to other and elds, as we would have to have the same older emulator version, which is not what people would use. So, we are showing some random PS2, PS3, PSP, Xbox, Xbox 360 and other consoles to round up the video. Where possible, I have included the afterburner stats or the emulator's built-in frame counter for your reference. Don't forget, you can buy the Ioneo Next and Pro models, as well as all of the range of Ioneo, One X Player and GPD handholds at joyx.co.uk or joyx.net. We ship worldwide and pride ourselves on excellent customer service. And if you have a moment, please subscribe if you have not already, as it really helps to grow this channel and we can make more videos. Thanks for watching so far and we hope to see you back in our next video on with the emulator gameplay.